Hey, my friends, thanks for being here today. I'm going to be using my fabulous cup, my very favorite beloved waterfall cup from Spontaneous Brian. Link will be below to where you can find this at his Etsy shop if you'd like it. And in addition to the colors that I showed in the beginning of this footage, I'm using Artist Loft White and I'm also using Deco Art. 24k metallics and I'm just going ahead and filling my colors randomly in the cup being careful to vary in what positioning I am layering the different colors within each ring in relation to the other rings so that when I pour out of the cup I'm getting a beautiful blend because my canvas is fairly small, I'm also not going to be putting an awful lot of paint in that outer ring. It's just too much paint for the size canvas that I am using. So when you see the close-up shot on my finished cup, you will notice that that outer ring does not have all that much paint in it. And that is the reason as to why I chose to do it that way. If you'd be so kind, go ahead and smash the like button, give a thumbs up. I really, really appreciate that. And of course, you can see there I'm doing a ring pour action. And I apologize. I did have a secondary camera. You'll see a, a small clip it from that secondary camera up ahead. But for most of the time, I actually had one of the spoons in the cups back there partially blocking the view and the only reason I'm even going to show you a clip up ahead is because I actually put my head in front of the overhead camera in part of the footage ahead and I obstruct the view completely from the overhead and so the only footage I have that's somewhat decent is from that secondary camera but it leaves a lot to be desired itself. Look at the cells that have started to form on this already this is incredible oh my goodness look at these cells my friend just look at these cells they are absolutely beautiful and in a moment in fact I'm going to be giving you a close-up view of those cells Here's a close-up on this puddle. Look at these cells. Oh my gosh, I am in cell heaven looking at this. This is one of my most magnificent outcome with cells. Unfortunately, <laughs> I'm going to lose most of that ahead in an unfortunate turn of events. I guess I'm kind of letting a little too much of a sneak peek out probably. So uh, yeah, it, it, this is beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, and I decide to go ahead and wreck this. And uh, in my ring pours, my friends, my regular ring pours when I have used regular cups, they more of the time they will turn out better for me if I do wreck them than if I don't. And occasionally the other way may have been true, meaning that sometimes I have wrecked them and did not like the outcome and I felt that it was because of the way I wrecked it and then I, of course, I would have thought, well, maybe if I hadn't wrecked it, I might have actually liked this painting, perhaps. 
Again, though, who can tell, right? Because we don't really know what the alternative would have really looked like. In the case of using Brian's waterfall cup, um, so far I have not gotten a good wrecking action to where I've liked the result. Do I think that that's the fault of the cup? No, I don't. I think overall it was just me probably not wrecking in an, in areas that worked. And usually when one of my wrecks does not go well, it's usually because of one stroke. In this case, I think it was the one that I just put in where it came into the center. I mean, this looks pretty pleasing right now. If it would have opened up properly, that might have worked. Or if I would have chosen to make that particular wreck not come into the center, it might have worked. But I have wrecked other paintings where I have taken the wreck into the center and it worked really, really well. So it's always hard to tell. It's always a little bit of a risk. You may have heard me say that before and you will probably hear me say it from time to time. Because it's true, at least in my experience. In fact, fluid art, in a way, is a little bit of a risk. <laughs> You never know if you're going to get an outcome that you like. It's just that the more you practice and the more you fine-tune your skills and your abilities, you do begin to increase the percentage of, of paintings that do come out well. It looks really easy, doesn't it? It looks like you just throw in all this paint into a cup and throw it around or tip it over or pour it and then stretch out the canvas and voila, like magic, you get this beautiful painting. It really looks that way, but... I can just tell you that the first year of attempting this particular genre of painting went so bad for me as you may have heard my story if you've been around long enough, I actually quit doing it for a while and then I happened upon one of Sarah's, Sarah Max paintings. Um, it was just offered to me toward the side when I was looking at YouTube videos one day and the YouTube videos that I was looking at were not even on the subject of painting at all or any art form whatsoever. It was on something completely different and I just happened to be shown this thumbnail and the image in that thumbnail really, really caught my attention because it was very fantastic compared with anything else I had ever seen in the world of acrylic pouring. And if you've heard my story before, I, I did click on it, I went and watched, and that was the beginning of changing everything around for me within this genre of painting. Now look at this, I mean, there's a lot of things about this that are really, really pretty. It, it actually seems like it might almost work out, doesn't it? There's a lot of beautiful things going on. But I already was getting a little disappointed with um, some of those cells as they opened up. They didn't really hold up in the way that I had anticipated. And this is real time that you're seeing this tilting right now. Maybe I tilted a little too quickly. I'm not sure. I mean, as I'm watching this back, I'm thinking maybe I did. Maybe I did tilt it a little too quickly, even though it doesn't really look that quick to me, but I have tilted more slowly at times, so maybe I just wasn't tilting slowly enough. So what bothers me at this point is that white swoosh right there. It's just boom right there in my face. Boom! There's a lot of other things I really really like. And even the the area that was the cells where I'm pointing right there, I, I do still like it. I just don't like it as much as I had and it did not open up the way that I had expected. So I don't dislike it but I also don't love it love it. So my plan here is to just add a little bit more paint and spiral a little bit more of a puddle back on into this and hope for the best. Sometimes adding an additional pour into a ring pour has worked for me, but a lot of times it has not. A lot of times I have still not liked the outcome. However, one of the things that I have really begun to experience within maybe the last year to a year and a half or so within my fluid art experiences is just the notion of continuing to work a painting even if a few tries at it doesn't look good that if i continue to work the painting most often i can bring forth a result that is really beautiful and what i have also found that this is very interesting some of wh when that happens and I'm maybe three or four tries into a painting, but each of those layers is playing some sort of a part within what does happen in the final result. A lot of times those have been my most stunning pieces when they have finally come through. 
And I would say the only time that I ever completely lose a painting is if I've poured on the canvas so much that the workspace below just can't take any more paint without it just it, like it would just go on the floor if I uh, poured again. If my painting still looks bad at that point to where I cannot tilt more paint off without an overflow happening onto the floor, then at that point I will toss the entire canvas usually at that point because at that point for me I usually just have so much paint on the counter that to try to save it all would be probably an epic mess. So I'm just taking a little bit more time now to open this up. My tactic here was to try to keep some of those gold cells. Uh, that was what I was hoping for. And again, you know, you can have your aims within this art form and having your aims is certainly a great place to start and it can be really helpful versus not having any at all. But of course, if you've been pouring for a while, you know that um, having an initial aim is <laughs> about as close to that aim as you can get. And sometimes you do get pretty close to what you had in mind. And oftentimes you end up with a result that is completely different. And that's why it's very important to be able to step back and assess what you're looking at on the canvas with fresh eyes because a lot of times, at least I had this experience when I would get a result that was so different from what I had in mind, which, you know, believe me, was more often than not and still is, I, my assessment right away would be that I didn't like it because I had this other image in mind. So I had to learn to assess my paintings with fresh eyes. I had to try to get in a space where I was walking in the room for the first time and seeing what was on the canvas for the first time as if somebody else had done the painting and assess it from that point of view. And that started to help me to see things with a much more objective opinion than if I simply was keeping in mind the initial imagination of what I was going for when I started mixing up my paint colors in the first place and picking my technique and all of that. If I kept comparing what I saw on the canvas to that, I almost always hated the results. Once I started pretending like I was walking in a room and seeing this canvas with whatever was across the, the the surface of it as if someone else had painted it and I was seeing it for the first time, I started to be able to assess my paintings with a much more objective frame of mind and I started to actually see that so many more of them were much more beautiful than I had been able to give them credit for. So remember that my friends because that is actually a very very helpful tip. So yeah I'm just stretching this stretching this as slowly as I am able to. And again, I want to thank Kelly Marshall for this beautiful paint set. She gave this to me, gosh, it was probably almost a year ago <laughs> at this point in time. And it took me a really long time to even get the time to start using them because uh, at one point after she'd given them to me, we were already scheduled for other collaborations, the color themes of which needed to be different than what these were. And then I also had some paintings that I had already done that I wanted to show the footage of and I was editing that. So it really took me quite some time, probably a few months to actually get to using this paint set. And so this is not the first painting that I have shown with those paint colors but it is uh, from, you know, kind of a little series that I kind of feel like I have going when I do use them because I love the way these colors play, especially when I use that 24K gold in the mix. They, there's a lot of beautiful interactions between that and the pinks and some of the purples that really, really make some beautiful overall color appearances going on. So that's where you'll start to see sometimes almost like a little bit of coral tinges. You might kind of catch that um, in some of the angles that you'll see. And certainly in the painting that I did that I posted on February 14th, it's called Mystic. And I did that for my one year channel anniversary. And that has a lot of beautiful peachy apricot colors coming through. And those came forth because of that 24K playing with those pink tones. I did not actually have paint 
that was in those orangey peachy coral tones so i love this color set it's beautiful and i thank kelly so much for it and kelly actually decided to gift this to me to go along with a pack of tweezers that she gave me a duplicate set of tweezers to the one that she has and she had seen one of my videos where I was um, using a couple of bamboo skewers to fish out a glob that had gotten in my paint. And I was mentioning in the video that I had been looking for those pointy tweezers at all the stores near me, all the grocery stores I would go to and the drug store, like, you know, like Rite Aid and that kind of thing and Walgreens. I'd look in all of them and I remember seeing pointy tweezers years and years ago, but I couldn't find any around town at all. So she surprised me with a, a set of these tweezers like she has and she decided to get me also this pack of paints and she sent me this wonderful little sweet note and a thank you for all of the trailers that I had been making for all of these collaborations that she and I along with Donna and Cindy and a group of other artists had been doing uh, you know this goes back a little over a year ago at this point and then still coming forth uh, you know we've still been kind of in a lot of collaborations together and so uh, it really touched me deeply that she would even do that and those tweezers have come in handy fortunately I don't get things in my paint too often but when I do then I take out those tweezers and I just think of Kelly and I say thank you my friend thank you <laughs> I'm able to uh, look at these beautiful tweezers thanks to you and able to fish out these annoying little globules thanks to you and look at this beautiful color palette and speaking of the color palette look at the flows on this canvas this is gorgeous 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 so i'm just bringing some of this darker pink up into that corner because i don't want that spot that's down toward the right to be the only area that that color is really popping so strongly so i'm just adding this in to kind of just balance out the coloring otherwise i really liked this upper corner just the way that it was it was really pretty and I'm only only adding these colors in to just kind of bring that pop of that pink and then I brought the lighter color in to kind of mix it down in there a little bit to try to make it look a little bit more natural to the actual pour. I at least like to do that. And remember my friends this is part of Choo Choo Tuesdays our Tuesday evening premiere train and we have Nate of Nate Bright Art and he started out our train this evening. Lori of Lori Houston Art, she followed Nate. Camille of Camille Amoy Art and then myself and we are at least currently the artists in the choo choo tuesday premiere train and if you are watching then i believe the massey boys are premiering a little ahead after my premiere is done so i'm sure you would like to go and check out their beautiful presentation as well they are not officially part of our train but i'm just mentioning them you know out of a courtesy and a lot of times nate has been our caboose and for a short time he's gonna have to be the engine so he's starting out but when he's the caboose he actually take we take a little break from our train and we go visit the masseys and then we come back to nate in our train uh, a half hour later so there's a little break up there so I've been mentioning the Masseys for a few weeks because of that let me know in the comments what you think of this painting would you have added the extra pour like I did or would you have left it alone I'd love to know your thoughts on that or anything else that you would like to share I do have some beautiful close-ups coming up and I have the dried results, uh, displayed dried results coming up later in the video as well. I absolutely love the lines. Look at these lines. Look at all of the different, I don't know, are those cells or little pebbles or what would you call those? Let me know in the comments what you would call some of those. I don't even know what I would call them. But look at all the wiggles and the lines. Some of the lines are so fine, so finely, finely detailed. It's just really incredible. Incredible. I get a lot of beautiful beautiful results by using this waterfall cup that I just do not get from using a regular cup 
Look at those overlayering of colors. That's another thing. I get a lot of beautiful, beautiful layer overlayering of colors. Mm -hmm.